Hearing none, I would now call on David Adames to approach the podium to provide his presentation on behalf of the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, David. Well, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of committee. Thanks so much for allowing us to uh, present this morning and best of the season to you as well. I'm here today representing both the Hamilton Chamber of Commerce and our uh, LRT Task Force, specifically at the request of the uh, LRT Task Force. I'd like to congratulate Council and staff on developing another comprehensive capital budget that addresses a number of policy priorities. I know that sometimes Council and staff say that as one budget is approved, that work begins on next year's budget, and it's for next year's capital budget consideration uh, that brings me here today, particularly in relation to funding for LRT. We know that it was too early to include any capital allocation for LRT in the 2013 capital budget. We also recognize that tremendous work is underway by city staff on not only rapid transit, but also mobility generally. The Hamilton Chamber is looking forward with anticipation, as are many stakeholders in Hamilton, on the next report from staff that provides an update on rapid transit and its relationship with other modes of transportation. The Hamilton Chamber of Commerce has long been a proponent of two key public transit infrastructure investments. The old day two-way GO train service to Toronto, which we understand has been confirmed for June 2015, and LRT in Hamilton. To support the policy position on LRT and to provide our members input on LRT, the Chamber formed a task force that met for the first time in January of 2012. The task force includes a representative from each of the Chamber's committees and divisions, as well as the Realtors Association of Hamilton Burlington and the Hamilton Halton Home Builders Association. And as Council knows, Council passed a motion in November of this year to have Mayor Bertina, or his designate, and three members of Council, Councillors Farr, Ferguson and McCaddy, join the Chamber's LRT Task Force. We'll be providing Council with copies of the Task Force meeting minutes on a go-forward basis. We've also established four subcommittees of the LRT Task Force to study key issues more in depth, including government relations, funding tools, public engagement, land use planning and development. This coming year, 2013, will, be, will prove to be a pivotal year for Metrolinx's Big Move plan and Hamilton's involvement in that plan. We were encouraged with the reconfirmation of Hamilton's LRT inclusion in the second round of projects as announced recently by Metrolinx. We also recognize that there are many considerations associated with LRT that need to be discussed as a community in the coming weeks and months including how we have that conversation as a community, how we approach and maximize land use planning on the LRT corridor, and how it integrates with GO train service, which will help address the demand side of LRT. How we fund the infrastructure investment, and how we position Hamilton to be near or at the top of the projects to receive funding and the green light to proceed. In short, this period will allow, allow us to assess the return on investment over the long term of investing in this 21st century transit infrastructure. Very soon, Metrolinx will release a consultation paper on possible funding tools that will be considered as part of Metrolinx's investment strategy for the big move. These funding tools will be an integral part of not only Hamilton's consideration of how we pay for LRT, but also for other municipalities in the Greater Toronto Hamilton area. The Hamilton Chamber welcomes the opportunity to help with the assessment of these funding tools. We will be working through the LRT Task Force to engage the business community as well as other key stakeholders including the Ontario Chamber of Commerce and the Hamilton Chamber serves on the Ontario Chamber's Sustainability Committee and its Big Move Subcommittee, Civic Action and the Toronto Board of Trade as other stakeholders. Where possible, we look forward to hosting joint town hall consultation meetings, including discussing the funding tools consultation paper. One of the sensitive issues around LRT that has arisen is, how much will the city need to pay for LRT, particularly from the city's capital budget? Of course, we know that this question will be answered in the context of the return on investment, as well as the comparison of ongoing operating costs for transit. It will also involve assessing what has taken place in other jurisdictions such as Toronto, 
which has received 100% funding to date for a number of transit projects, and outside the GTHA, Waterloo and Ottawa, which have received a combination of provincial and federal funding, but are also contributing municipal capital dollars. However, in one way, it's far too early to know if or how much may be required from the city's capital budget. Although we need to be active in the consultation on Metrolink's funding tools paper and the overall investment plan, we must also ensure that we do not lose sight of our own ability as a municipality to plan for and fund future rapid transit improvements outside of the LRT funding discussion. In a few months' time, the picture will be much clearer on two aspects of Hamilton's LRT future. What is the cost benefit of LRT for Hamilton and what, if anything, will the city need to contribute in terms of capital funding? Regardless of the outcome, the Hamilton Chamber recommends that capital funding for rapid transit improvements be considered as part of the city's 2014 capital budget and its 10-year capital forecast. So through the chair, I welcome any questions